name is Cameron, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to perform a barium enema. First, I'm going to start with what supplies we're going to need. We're going to need a towel. We're going to need some lubricant for the enema tip, some tape, the barium mixture itself, a gown for your patient, some gloves, your uh, inflator cuff, as well as your air infuser, and the barium bag itself. To we don't currently have hemostats, but you would need those as well. And you're gonna to wanna to mix your barium with about 500 milliliters of room temperature water. Room temperature to make sure it's more comfortable for the patient, it's less irritating. You're gonna to wanna to shake it, mix it for about 30 seconds, and you're gonna to wanna to hang it no more than about 24 inches above the rectum. And uh, besides that, we're ready to get the patient. Okay, ready to get my patient now. You ready? Alright, Victor? Yes. Can I get your last name, please? Oh, yeah. Your date of birth? 1784. Alright. My name is Cameron, and uh, what brings me to the hospital today? Constipation. Constipation for how long? Two weeks. Two weeks, okay. Is there any chance of pregnancy before we start? No. Okay, good. Uh, do you know why, what procedure you're going to be getting done today? Okay. It's called the barium minima. Uh, I'm going to get you up on this table. We're going to be inserting a enema tip into your rectum. We're going to be running contrast up into your large intestines. It's going to help visualize on the image afterwards. We're going to be rolling you around so that it coats the entire intestine. And okay, the procedure is going to be uncomfortable. Um, you're going to feel some discomfort. I'm going to need you to hold the tip in, though. It's crucial that you do that. Before we start, are you allergic to any contrast that you know of? No. Okay. I'm going to need you to sign this consent form okay. stating that you know what procedure we're having done and that you're not allergic to any contrast. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've got my patient on the table before I go any farther. Victor, you did follow the directions that were given to you, correct? Yes. Did you have any food in the last 24 hours? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, just to be sure, we're going to take a scout image. It's going to show us the intestine, make sure he's completely evacuated. We're going to be using a 14 by 17 set. Place my right marker, bottom right corner. A standard KUB. He's going to be lying supine in the center at the crest. I've already heat tinted my tube to the table. 40 to 48 SID. What about there? Got that. This position, I'd probably use about 75 to 80 KV on him, about 32 mass. All right, Victor, go ahead and take a deep breath. Blow it all out and hold it. Expose. Okay, go ahead and breathe. And I would run my set and show it to the radiologist. Okay, now that I've shown the radiologist our first image, they have given the go-ahead to go ahead and proceed. I've gotten my patient here into the Sims position. I'm gonna go ahead and place a blanket over them for their privacy. Just like so. Now the tipping process starts. I'll go ahead and grab the tip. You're going to want to apply KY jelly. Go ahead and be liberal with it. There's no need to conserve it. You want to go in no more than about three and a half to four inches. All right, Victor, you're going to feel some discomfort, okay? You're going to go about an inch and a half in towards the belly button and about no more than two inches up following the curvature of the sacrum. Okay, Victor, taking a deep breath. Blow it out. Okay, go up. And we're in. At this point, I would inflate the cuff. No more than one pump. It's about 90 cc's of air. Okay, clamp it off. At this point, the radiologist would come in and barium, he would pump air into the colon to distribute the barium up through the, about the terminal ileum and he would take his spot films and at that point he would call for his overheads. Alright, I'm ready to take my overheads now. Uh, before I continue, I forgot to mention, I had bled the line previously to ensure that there's no air in the tube. And since there's barium now in the large intestine, we dropped the bag and set it on the table. Okay, 
Okay. First image is just a PA. Uh, the patient's prone, similar to a KEB. Make sure my tube is detented to the table. Center at the iliac crest and mid satchel plane. There. Make sure that it's detented to the uh, lined up with your cassette as well. I'm going to still use a 14 by 17. I'm going to place my left marker left side of the patient. We're lined up. Shield the patient. Out there. And on this, I would use an exposure of about 90 to 100 kVp and bump up the mass from 32 to about 50. All right, Victor, go ahead and blow out all your, all your air, hold your breath, expose. Okay, go ahead and breathe. Take my cassette out, run it. Next is the PA axial. It's a 30 to 40 degree cotted angle. The beam exits the as is. Still enters the mid sagittal plane. About there. Line up our cassette. 14 by 17. You could use a 10 by 12 on this one. Place your marker. Just, uh, use the same technique here. All right, Victor, go ahead and blow out all your air again and hold your breath. Expose. Okay, go ahead and breathe. How are you feeling? Good. Good. Run this cassette. Move on to the next. All right, next, I'm gonna shoot my right lateral rectum. Keep the exam moving efficiently since the patient's still in the prone position. So I got the shield here. I'm gonna be using a 10 by 12 cassette now, my marker. Since it's against this right side, I'm using my right marker on top. I wanna to center at the mid-coronal plane at the level of the as-is. About there, make sure your cassette is lined up. For this, I would use a technique of about 110 kVp, and I bump up the mass since there's more density uh, to about 120 to 160 mass. All right, Victor, go ahead and blow out all your air. Hold it, expose. Okay, go ahead and breathe. All right, next I'm gonna be shooting my oblique images. Since the patient is prone still, I'm gonna have them roll up a little bit onto his right side do the RAO position. It's going to be about 35 to 45 degrees. He's going to bend his left leg and his left arm, his right arm down to his side, just like that, perfect. Center again at iliac crests and about one to two inches lateral from the mid sagittal plane towards the elevated side. Make sure your cassette 14 by 17. My marker. Just make sure it's the correct side. I'm be placing my left on his left side. Tinted. Lined up. Okay. Victor, go ahead and blow out all your air. Hold your breath. Expose. Go ahead and breathe. Take out the cassette, go run it, bring in another 14 by. Have the patient roll now into an LAO position. So Victor, go ahead and roll up onto your left side a little bit for me. Stop right there. Again, 35 to 45 degrees. Everything's pretty much the exact opposite now. His right leg is going to be bent. Sure. Shield there. Right arm is bent. Again, one and a half, one, one to two inches. Lateral from the mid sagittal plane towards the elevated side at the iliac crest. So I'm lined up. This is my left marker on his left side. Looks good. Okay, hey, Victor, go ahead and blow out all your air. Hold it. Expose. On both of these, I would have used about 100 kVp, about the same as my PA at a 50 mass. 
they got things set, go ahead and run it and move on to the next image. All right, next I'm going to move on to the DQ, left lateral DQ. Make sure my shield is appropriate, not in the field of light. I placed my 14 by 17 cassette in the vertical stand holder. Because his right side is up, I'm going to use my right marker. And we enter at mid central plane, but at the level of the iliac crest. About there. Make sure your cassette is lined up. Technique would be about the same again. 90 to 110 in that range, probably about 100 kvp at about 50 mass. Alright, Victor, go ahead, blow out all your air and hold it. Expose. Go ahead and breathe. Okay, next we're going to be doing our. Uh, right lateral cubitus. Just like the left, it's going to be entering at the level of the iliac crests, mid satchel plane, 14 by 17 per set again. This time we're going to mark the side up, which is the left side. Make sure we're lined up with the set, which we are. So make sure your shield is not in the light field. Victor, go ahead and blow out all your air. Hold your breath. Expose. All right, you go ahead and breathe. All right, now that we've taken all of our overhead images, we go ahead and remove the tip now. You want to make sure you remove your clamp and deflate the cup first. It's a crucial part. Okay, Victor, go ahead and take a good deep breath for me. Blow it out. Okay, tip is out. And at this point, we want to remove the tube for the patient, get it out of the way. Victor, now I'm going to need you to go get up slowly. I'm going to need you to defecate as much of the barium solution as you can. And then we're going to be taking one more image after that. All right, I'm going to check to see if my patient's ready. You all ready? Yeah. All right, go ahead and get back down on the table, lay on your back, head up here, feet down there. Now that my patient has evacuated, as much barium as you could, we're going to go ahead and take our last image, it's the post evac. It's going to be another standard KUV center at the iliac crest of the mid satchel plane. 40 inch SIV. There, make sure your cassette is lined up. 14 by 17, the right marker on the right side. Alright, Victor. Make sure we shield your patient. It's not in the light field. Victor, go ahead and blow out all your air and hold your breath. Expose. That I would go about back to a normal KUB technique, so about 80 KUB, about 32 mass. Go ahead and breathe if I didn't tell you to already. And uh, to give the patient the last final instructions. Okay, Victor, go ahead and get up slowly. So you're gonna to wanna to go home and drink lots of water. You're gonna notice some discoloration in your stool. It's gonna appear a little white, that's normal. Just the barium flushing out. Drink lots and lots of fluids. All right, here we have the PA projection. It's done to visualize the entire colon filled with barium and air. You wanna be able to see both flexures as well as the ascending colon, the transverse, and the descending. Next we have the PA axial projection. It's done to visualize the sigmoid region of the colon, as you can see here. And because we used a 30 to 40 degree cotted angle, it's going to appear elongated. This helps to open it up and better visualize it. And here we have a lateral rectum projection. This best demonstrates the rectum area as well as the distal sigmoid portion. All right, next we're gonna move on to the PA oblique RAO position. This position is done to open up the right colic flexure, as you can see here. It's also a good image to visualize the ascending colon as well as the sigmoid region. Okay, and here we have the PA oblique LAO position. This one helps to open up the left colic flexure, 
and it's also a good image to visualize the descending portion of the colon. Okay, next we're going to move on to the decubitus positions. First, here we have the left lateral decubitus position. It shows the uh, lateral side of the ascending colon, as well as the medial side of the descending, because air rises with the help of gravity. Okay, here we have the right lateral decubitus position, pretty much the opposite of the left lateral. Here we can see that the uh, medial side of the ascending colon and the lateral side of the descending colon is best demonstrated. And here we have our post evac, the last image we took. This was done after the patient had defecated as much of the barium as possible. If it's determined that they have not expelled enough of the barium, the patient may be instructed to drink a hot beverage such as tea or coffee to further stimulate the evacuation of the remaining barium. Okay, and there's many pathologies you want to be aware of when reading your images. Uh, here we see an example of one. You can see that the contrast doesn't appear to be very smooth. It has kind of a rough cobblestone appearance. Uh, this is evidence of um, colitis, which is inflammation of the colon.